Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Dustin DeVries, who is a CTO and co-founder of Caffeine Interactive. Dustin, welcome to the program. Thanks, Mike. Thanks uh, for having me. You're welcome. And I'm excited to learn all about anything to do with caffeine because I, <laughs> because I am a- addictive. So if, if I can get interactive with caffeine, we're good to go. I'm sure that I, I know that's you don't sell coffee or anything like that. So I want to, first of all, ask you, what is the meaning behind the, the company name that you chose, Caffeine Interactive? So, you know, honestly, it was my... Uh, so- we're a husband and wife founded company. We've grown to about 20 employees, but uh, we started as Caffeine Consulting and it was a, a joint venture my wife had with another business partner. Uh, they came up with the name and then they decided, they only made it so far, decided not to pursue the company. She kept the the rights to the name and we decided to u- utilize it because we thought it was a cool name. And then we yeah. changed it over to Caffeine Interactive. So Cool. Well, there's always fun stories behind, you know, oh yeah, one time we were, so I love hearing that. So give me a little bit of your background and your entrepreneurial journey. What led you into the industry and then to found a company with your wife? Because I think that that brings a whole other um, nuance to doing business, but um, what's your journey been like? (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, I started, I spent about 10 years in the semiconductor industry out of college and then from there, uh, I guess the last two or three years, I started kind of on the side working um, so in the semiconductor industry, I was doing uh, software development uh, and then kind of started doing some moonlighting on the side. And then uh, around 2010, I guess it was about, you know, 10 years into that that journey, I decided to branch off and start doing my own thing. And, you know, I've been doing that now for uh, over, I guess, what is it, 12 years now. Neat. And it, what did you and your wife co-found this at the same time, the company? No. Actually, you know, what started, it really started from, I was kind of getting tired of corporate, the corporate world. And I wanted no. to go off and do something. Yeah, believe it or not, that's <laughs> crazy, right? Um, so I, you know, decided to go off and, and focus on this. And I started doing just some solo kind of entrepreneurship stuff. Just, uh, you know, I started, well, freelancing, essentially. Started getting some freelance gigs and uh, soft, it's all software development kind of work. And so I started doing that and it just kind of materialized into, okay, well, um, at some point we hit some critical mass and, uh you know, I had to decide, okay, do I keep doing this or do I start adding more employees? And so as it started to grow a little bit, then I, I brought my wife in. So my wife's back, my background is in software development. Her background is in product strategy, business analysis, things like that. Um, so we make a pretty good combo in terms yeah. of, you know, she can do a lot of the work on the requirements side and specking out projects and then, you know, me, the architecture and the implementation and all that. So we just kind of combined forces and have not looked back. <laughs> That's awesome. And so um, obviously with a husband and wife team, the word balance comes in. So you just described how you balance each other out, but talk a little bit about like a work-life balance because, (laughs) you know, you're at the office all day or you're at the home office all day. And how do you not bring work home or how do you not bring personal to work? Because that might be a nine hour conversation right there, but give us the thumbnail sketch of what you have discovered through some trials and tribulations, I'm sure as well. I'll start with the best part is we get to the expense every meal that we have together. So, you know, it's always a business expense because yeah. <laughs> the two founders of the company are together, you know, it's hundred yeah. percent of the ownership getting together. We, we should expense this, but, and I'm not a tax advisor. So, you know, I hope yeah, anyone right. listening doesn't yeah. take this to heart, please but, get, uh, please consult with your CPA before implementing yeah. the ideas of the show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Lots of footnotes and asterisks yeah, really? on the show notes. <laughs> um, but no, I, I would say, you know, for us, I mean, balance is definitely a big, important part of it. There's, you know, uh, even like right now, I'm up in my office and her office is downstairs. I'm upstairs. She's downstairs on the other side of the house. Yeah. That's one way to k- get balance, right? yeah. just physical balance, physical separation. Um, I think also just the fact that she's handling more of the front end, interfacing with customers and understanding the requirements and their needs. And that we're more in the back end uh, implementation side of things. It creates a natural kind of div- division between her responsibilities and mine. So that creates a little bit of a, better ecosystem for us to work together um you know it's, it's challenging um for sure and then you know you pile on all the other stresses of life that that come in behind that and it's even even crazier but i guess it's just become the norm for us over the last 
you know, 10, 12 years and we've managed to to live with it. And I think, you know, there's also the motivation of the fact that we're working from home and we've been working from yeah. home since well before COVID. And I really like that lifestyle. And so I'm yeah. motivated to maintain that lifestyle. I know. You know? I, I've said that so many times, like COVID and, oh, um, uh, virtual and Zoom. That was my, I've worked from home for the last 12 years and COVID schmovid. It doesn't, it didn't affect me one bit. And I'm thrilled to see these people now going, oh, um, we now can go back to the offices, but we sure have liked doing virtual things. And, mm-hmm. and I think that there's even some traditional industries that have discovered, you know what? I'm an attorney and people normally come down to my downtown office, find parking, come in, meet with this in our conference room for an hour. But, you know, after we were forced to do some virtual things, some people like, virtual some people like in person and we're doing the mix so i think that people are going to discover that and just like work-life balance well virtual in-person balance you're gonna you're gonna serve your clients the way they need to be served and i know that um talking about you know what your services are to your clients talk a little bit about what is the main deliverable when someone hears about caffeine interactive what are they coming to you for so we are a full service digital agency so everything from uh marketing to website development to web and mobile app development i would say you know with a background in software development that is really our core strength it doesn't mean that we aren't good at the other things but building web apps mobile apps is really you know where we uh that's where we really founded our the the background the backbone of our company is really based on that i guess i would say um and so you know a lot of times people are coming to us is because they have a great idea for a new app they're coming to us because you know sometimes it's business owners who are looking at maybe some inefficiencies within their business processes and they're looking they have some ideas about ways they can go in and automate some of that and make it more efficient and then we're coming in to help them build systems so sometimes it's customer facing things that are going out into the world and you know a lot of people using it sometimes it's just businesses that are who are you know hiring us to help build some better processes for themselves like infrastructure uh, Yes, infrastructure, integrations between systems, things like that. That's cool. Um, you know, I, I was interviewing a uh, mortgage lender earlier this week, and one of his value adds to his real estate partners is we have our own app and we can co-brand it with our realtor partner so that now the realtor can say, hey, Mr. or Ms. Um, buyer, when you get pre-approved with XYZ Lender, um, you've got this really neat app to get pre-approved and see every step along the way. Well, here is anyone out there can say, I'll email you updates, I'll call you with updates. But to have some technology like that, which can be customizable, um, and, and that's just one way to use that. But like you said, infrastructure, you might have a company that goes, you know what, we want our own intranet, but we want the intranet to be in, in our hands in a app version so that our employees that are out in the field can upload receipts or invoices or just you know take pictures of their work. All of those kind of things. There's a lot of applications. Is there a specific industry that you tend to work with more than others? You know, I wish there was because I think it would make our our marketing and, and kind of like campaign strategies and stuff a yeah. lot easier. But we've worked with so many different industries. So I wouldn't say we necessarily specialize in one. We've done a lot of real estate. And I think that's just because naturally, I think uh, real estate professionals tend to be more entrepreneurial in spirit anyways. And of course, you know, real estate, you know, in large part of the country has been pretty strong. I think it's maybe going a little bit of decline right now. But so a lot of times they end up with the surplus of money. They're like, well, I want to like, leverage this you know in another way and i've got some ideas i've seen some problems in the industry things i can go and uh you know innovate on and so we get a lot of uh new projects through that but uh you know i'll say you know what the things i like i really enjoy working on and you know this isn't necessarily a specific niche or anything like that but we get someone coming in with a specific need in a specific in- industry that's maybe not that glamorous like one that's coming to mind right now is we had a uh, a customer who does uh, auditing of medical gas equipment, like in dentist's office, hospitals, things like that. And he had a process he would go through, but it was not automated at all. So we worked with him to build an iPad app so that all of his employees could use iPads and go in and they could select you know, which room they're in and go through and audit, you know, what kind of, of uh, equipment, what kind of access points were in that room, go through and add those in, go through, you know, whatever criteria they go through when they're auditing these things and put in all of that and then generate a report at the end of that made his workflow a lot better that was totally an internal use tool nothing customer facing in that other than the report it generates it maybe goes to the the customer that he's working with but that's it you know and it was just a cool app because you see where technology really helped him 
Um, and it wasn't like he was coming up with some great idea that was going to go make hundreds of millions of dollars selling to the masses to consumers. Yeah. It was all about his internal business processes. Yeah, that's that huge. And, and, you know, I think that when you, if you really broke that down, what is that, you know, like the opportunity cost, if I'm doing this, I can't be doing that. Well, what you just described would save them time and energy and money and time is money. And so being able to say, yeah, yeah, it's an app that makes it more convenient, but look at what you can do with the saved efficiencies. And maybe that cuts down on mistakes and all of those things. So I think that's such a huge piece that people don't think about. They just look at, oh, um, you're talking about an app, what's it cost? No, no, no. Let's talk about what it's going to do for you, even long term. Yeah, without a doubt. And you look around just across all industries, right? Right now, there's a shortage of workers constantly getting this, you know, we're sorry that we can't take your call net right now, but we're understaffed and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, well, this is a way if you can't hire enough people, well, the next logical way, or maybe the better logical way to handle that is how can we make better efficiency out of the people that we have? And I think that's exactly what he did. We helped him helped him fulfill that mission. So I think it worked out really well for him and you know for our other customers we work with. Yep. Awesome. So I know that one of the things you talk about is your 97 method to increase sales. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So when you think about marketing and reaching out to people, um, you know, there's the people who are ready to buy their hand is, their fingers on the buy button. As soon as they get the right offer, they're ready to purchase. And that typically, you know, it varies based on what industry you're serving, but usually that's around two to three, maybe 5% max of the people you work with. And the other 95, we call 97% of the 97 methods where the name comes from are the people who aren't ready to buy. They're the people who they have problems. So there's kind of four categories. The people who are problem aware, they're ready to buy right now. There's the people who are problem aware. They know they have a problem, but they're not ready to buy. They're in research mode. They're looking at all their options. But as soon as they fi- figure out, get enough information, they're ready to buy. There's people who are problem aware that haven't started researching yet. They know this, there's this problem that exists. They haven't started looking into it. Then the fourth quadrant is kind of like the people who aren't even problem aware. They don't, they don't know, know they, there's a problem. Yeah, they, yeah. They don't, they're not happy with something, but they don't even know what they don't know. Exactly. Yeah. And so what we do when we think about the 97 method, what we do with marketing is we're thinking about uh, you know, the, the easy thing to do, well, easy slash hard thing to do, if that even makes sense, is to go out and, and try to prospect the people who are in that 97% of the of the population, which is, you know, they, they, they're not ready to buy yet. And how do you nurture them across the finish line to make that purchase? You know, it's really easy. You know, it sounds easy. It sounds enticing to go target the people who are ready to buy, go run ads and campaigns and stuff to get them to purchase right away that, that 2 or 3%. But that's the most com- competitive spot. That's where everyone is competing. So it's like, how do you get a message out that's in like on different channels, different market mediums, different problems that you're p- pitching, uh, and go pitch to those people versus trying to compete for the most competitive segment, that two or three percent that are ready to buy? It takes a little more time, a little more nurturing, but then you can get results from that. And if you tie in the old, do you, you remember years ago the concept of content marketing? Yes. Well, I say content marketing is no longer, is dead. And here's the reason why. Content marketing just means you're teaching people, you're educating people, you're not push, 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 sell, 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 you're teaching. Well, that's just good marketing. Don't call it content marketing. It's just good marketing, it should be. So yeah, content marketing is still around. It's just not called content marketing. It should just be effective marketing. But when you can take that content and break it down into digestible chunks and pieces, because you can put together a nine page blueprint PDF and get it, you know, everything out of your head that it describes what you do to solve your perfect uh, target audiences problems and send it to them and they glance at it and it's like Neh. but if you send them you know just point number one and teach them about point number one well they'll digest that and understand that and then you follow up a couple days later with point number two and you drip 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 and then it's like they say you follow up until they buy or die couldn't agree more yeah you're you're exactly right i think that uh and you know another caveat i'd add to that is make sure you're speaking to their problems i think you know i've heard other people other uh, professionals that uh, people that I respect that are great marketers talk about making sure you're speaking to their problem. You know, don't jump right into how you would solve their problem. You need to make sure you identify their pain point, scratch that itch for them, and then as you go through that process, you know, you might even use this to 
educate them on how they can solve their problem. You know, we can sit there and talk to people about, well, here's how you would build, you know, an app, or here's how you would solve this problem you have in your company and explain it all to them. Give them, just basically lay it out. Like, this is exactly how you would, like I can, if I was building my custom home builder, I could explain to people how you build a house. I could put together a bunch of white papers talk about here's how you pour a foundation. Here's it. But well, they, they don't necessarily care about that. But also it's, it's way too difficult for them to do themselves, right? So if you go through and give them the recipe, then it's like, well, I can go do it myself, spend a lot of time and a lot of chaos and doing the first time, or I can just go hire somebody. And like you've already built up that authority with with your customer. Yeah. So they're already going to, you know, naturally want to come to you or they're biased towards you because you've educated them on this to the point they're ready to, to make a purchase. And and I'll clarify what I meant. They don't care about that. They do care about that. They just don't care about it at, at the very first time you're talking to them. And we tend as business marketers, salespeople to just blah, get everything yes. up front. So they care about it. But first, they want to know about, and I've heard it said this way so many times, sell the futures not the features and sell the transformation, not the transportation. They want to get to that, mm-hmm. that desired future. And when you talk about that, what they want and they, what they need and, and their, you know, dream there. And in this case, let's say the, the dream house. Oh yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to have, you know, a beautiful home with, and they describe that. Yes. Wouldn't it make you feel wonderful and bring friends over? Oh yeah. 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 They don't care about the studs at the foundation at that point. At some yeah. point when they when they they get it, now you're meeting with them the next time. And now, you're, of course, you're going to talk about all the nuts and bolts and the foundation things. But that's that's kind of um, shifting the approach. And that kind of gets into that 97 method because you know what? There, you know, let's just use the 97 as an example. I know it's like 97% of the time people aren't ready to buy. Well, let's just pick um, 97 bullet points that would fully um, articulate what you do to solve their problem. Don't put that in a white paper and send it to them. Send them 97 emails over 97 weeks, and at some point, at the bottom of every email, it's like, if you want to learn more, please contact our office. At some point, someone's going to contact the office after email two, someone else after email 22. Yeah, you're exactly right. I've heard there's different stats in the industry. People talk about how many times, how many touch points you need to have with the customer before they're ready to buy. You know, hidden secret is it's not one, it's not two. It's typically several. Uh, The numbers I hear are typically between like 10 and 15 times that you need to reach out, touch, call touch points with the customer before they take action. So I, I think you're exactly right. Well, these days, uh, and I've heard that for decades, right? You know, it takes X number of times. Well, I would say that it takes two or three or four times to count as the first time because mm-hmm. Dustin and Mike are busy and we get text and instant message. I just looked down at my phone and I got a Facebook message. I don't know who it's from, but I saw it came in. Well, oh, I got distracted. Well, yeah. here's the problem. You can't have a formula and say it takes 22 times to get because it might take two or three or four times to kind of get their attention because they're distracted. So it yes. kind of gets down to you just keep on following up. And here's another tip. And I know you agree with this. Please don't just set up a 97 point email drip series because they're going to tune you out because today twice I went to my outlook and I'm like, okay, I'm tired of getting this email from this place. I'm just going to set up an outlook rule. Because if I hit opt out or, you know, unsubscribe, maybe they will, maybe they won't. I'm just setting up an outlook rule. So here's that marketer thinking they're marketing to me, but it's going right to my deleted. So you need to have some touch points where it's a few emails here, a few text messages there. Uh, maybe, ooh, God forbid we send an actual piece of mail in their mailbox, ooh, or maybe a voicemail. You've got to have a multi-touch campaign that stays in touch with people, that educates them on what it is that you really do and you know what it boils down to is just be real with people just real is rare you know just talk to them email like you talk to them just converse with people don't try to take them through some you know formula like you know how sales trainers try to get you to and people can see right through that so i think you just go hey what do you need let's let's see what we can do i couldn't agree more and i think you know as an exercise for everyone who's listening right now um you know i think one thing do go look at all the the cold emails you get and I think you kind of addressed this at the beginning, but as we were talking about this, but like you know, speaking to the problem, how many people come in with a cold email and, re- and the first sentence of the email is, hello, we are a company that does X, Y, Z, but you know, you're not speaking to a problem. You're talking yep. about your solution. Yep. You haven't identified the problem that that person has. So it's automatically just tuned out. So you, you need to start that conversation, painting that picture, like you said, paint that picture of like where they're going to go, where they're headed, that vision. And then you know, once you get them engaged, then you can start talking about 
how you may uniquely solve that problem, but you've got to you've got to identify that problem first. No one's even going to give you the time of day. So you know how people say, you know, we walk our talk. So let's mm-hmm. let's put you to the test of what you just said. In a cold email, you shouldn't say we have the best and we hit, you should choose us because. So I'm going to go to caffeineinteractive.com right now and let's just see if you. Oh, oh gosh. On. Oh boy. <laughs> Don't worry. You, pa- you pass the test. But I'm, I'm, I'm a little just, nervous uh, right now. I'm confirming <laughs> the fact that here at the very top of the website, which is a nice, clean, crisp looking website, it says energize your company, grow your business with quick and affordable apps, websites, and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Now, and and look at look at right at the very end of that one little statement, backed by an award winning team. So you, you're exactly right, and you're doing what you said. Energize your company, not our award winning team can help you. No, it's energize your company, grow your business. That speaks to the visitor. And then, and of yeah. course, here's what you do. And way down there, it says some of our work includes awesome. But that's exactly right. I mean, people, you know, I I uh, I've, have said this for years, and maybe you've heard. Um, I I learned it from hearing Brian Tracy speak and reading his books um have do you know what everyone's favorite radio station is uh <laughs> this is a trick question no yes. i don't yes it is <laughs> so it's, it's not a trick question but it's a neat, neat little uh a speaker speakers uh spiel everyone's mm-hmm. favorite radio station is wii fm what's in it for me oh. <laughs> and if we like can yep. <laughs> advertise air quotes on WIIFM, if we can advertise what's in it for them and speak to them, not, you know, and of course, some, you know, they need to have the social, pre- all of those things, but everything you're saying is just you're spot on. I resonate so well with that. So here's what I would like to just ask in com- conclusion. If someone's listening to this going, man, they got that put together. If they can help my business do some of these things and use a little bit of tech and app and digital and all this, what's the best way that they can learn more and reach out and connect with Dustin and the team? You know, certainly if you go to our website, we've got the generic thing, the newsletter and all that stuff. But like, I'd say just reach out to us, you know, you come to our website, you can read some of our, our case studies, testimonials. We've got, you know, some blog content we have on there, but certainly if they want to reach out to me, um, fill our contact form or just, uh, you know, email me directly. I'm, I'm Dustin at caffeineinteractive.com. Our website is caffeineinteractive.com. Uh, we have a lot of great content. I'll admit that like, we're so busy with other customer work that sometimes we're not as on top of our own website, but it's certainly something we're always focused on because we're always thinking about our pipeline. We're a service-based industry, so we're only as good as our backlog of yeah. of work that we have coming through. So it is a focus of ours. So yeah, I think that's the best way. Perfect. Well, Dustin, thank you so much for coming on. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, Mike. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.